Welcome to this, our first video about our upcoming expansion for Hearts of Iron 4, By Blood Alone. My name is Peter Nicholson, I'm the Game Director for Hearts of Iron, and along with the team I'd like to take some time to introduce to you the features and overhauls that will be coming in the Avalanche update, accompanying By Blood Alone. To start off with, I'd like to introduce to you our overhaul to Peace Conferences. In the old Peace Conference system, Claiming states was a fairly absolute thing, which we'd never really been very happy about. We wanted to move to a system where everyone in the conference has an opportunity to assert their claims. Every time a player involves themselves uh, in a conflict or a contest, the price of that state will rise with a sort of tax per turn. It allows everyone in the conference to gain something after having participated in a war. Previously, the top two participants we're pretty much always in full control of the conference. So with the removal of the turn order system is really the reason that we moved on to the blind bid system as a replacement. Every time a state is bid upon and is contested, the cost of bidding on every subsequent turn for every actor within the conference increases. Um, and then on the other side, we have uncontested bids where every turn that an uncontested bid is untouched by anyone else in the conference, the cost of bidding on that in the future increases. So both of these separate but related actions drive the conference towards a conclusion by slowly increasing the point costs of all the states that have been interacted with. We have had to do a fairly extensive rebalancing of war participation, and not just the existing values, but how war participation is generated. People are actually arguing and negotiating with each other now in the conferences, which is a lot of fun to see. What we will try to do now is more clearly define where everything is. So everything that is relating to the countries on the losing side will be on one side of the screen. Everything related to the countries on the winning side will be on the opposite end of the screen. So if I were to select take state, everything that I will do on the map will be a take state action as before. But now if I click on a puppet action, I can now do that directly on the map. The mouse cursor will know that, okay, here this country exists. So if you click here, you puppet that country. And you can also specifically select a target and that filters out all of the map markers so it looks a little bit more neatly. But if you then want to still tag over to another nation, you can just hover your mouse cursor click on that nation and now it will swap to whatever action you're doing towards this country. Peace conferences are of course just one of the overhauls that we'll be bringing to you in the By Blood Alone expansion. Another important sphere of interest for us is a series of quality of life improvements to the air warfare system. I really enjoy now the ability you have that you can now deploy multiple wings, not just one wing at a time, it really makes things so much quicker. I can't understate how much, how much quality that adds to my life. So, for instance, if you play a nation where you know that I will be deploying mostly fighters, the tactical bombers, or close air support, then you can go in and on the airbase assign these three buttons to be tied to those uh, wing types. And now these will be active on all of your air bases. So you could just in one go deploy all of your uh, planes that you have in your stockpile and now you have several wings at your disposal. Air groups are an organizational tool that is, is really optional for players to use. But if you find that it simplifies controlling you know, hundreds or thousands of aircraft at once, then I think it'll be something that you'll find useful. So now you can take all of your wings and try to group them in air groups and distribute them all over across the map to front lines. Uh, where your ground troops are. A big and I think very noticeable part of the air changes is the change we've made to standardizing air wing sizes. Generally aircraft will now come in fixed groups of 100. Having something that is reliably a fixed size makes things like AI management uh, and optimizing code uh, a lot easier for us. 
it's fairly obvious to anyone who's played the game uh, that a size 100 wing might not fit. And in those cases, we have still fixed wing sizes, but smaller fixed wing sizes. In the long run, it's something that people will realize uh, is an improvement for managing large numbers of aircraft and for just overall game health. The, the final air change I want to talk about today is the uh, interception mechanic that we are adding. The interception is the ability now to intercept a group of airplanes between the starting location and the ending location. So for example, uh, in the Battle of Britain, you'll be able to intercept German airplanes over the channel now. Moving on from the air system, we're keeping a keen eye on the current state of the meta, as well as the exceptional feedback that we get from our dedicated fans. As a result of this, the Avalanche update will contain a comprehensive rebalance of the Naval Warfare module. The tech tree previously was quite large. We've chosen to split it into two sections, the ship hulls, and then a second one which provides you with the supporting techs, such as guns or damage control. This means that you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. Gone are the secondary battery tech line, and they are now rolled into the medium caliber line, meaning that you have less to research. Hit profiles are how we work out how easy it is to hit a ship. Previously, a destroyer would be harder to hit because it would have a low hit profile because of its speed. That is no longer the case. Now, it's all about being able to take that damage or deal that damage faster than your enemy. We've introduced new modifiers for radar, fire control and homing torpedoes that increase your chance to hit ships. You will always be able to spot somebody else's ships, you just have to be there for enough time. You also have a chance to instantly spot a unit. This value is based upon your progress per hour value. Previously, players were able to exploit an oversight within the ship designer that allowed you to get a heavy cruiser with only light cruiser guns. This has been fixed. Previously, dual purpose guns were an end game tech. Now, they have their own fully fledged tree that comes off of the 1939 light gun tech. This means that historic designs with dual purpose guns are now much more attainable at the correct dates. Dual purpose guns are light guns and secondary batteries that give you air attack at the expense of piercing. This allows you to deal with both air threats and ships with one module, making them a very cost effective way of equipping your ship. We've increased the penalty for overstacking and this means you will be further penalized for having large fleets. So now it is encouraged that you have good sized fleets spread out across an area as opposed to one single large fleet. Joining an ongoing battle was a very, very dangerous thing to do. It gave you large penalties to your positioning, which made you much worse in combat. These have now been reduced, meaning that the strike mission is now very powerful and very, very good for your large, hard-hitting fleets. A constant issue ailing the multiplayer community was Sub 3's sub-visibility stat. Sub 3 and Sub 4 visibility stats have been reduced, and the ability of sonar on destroyers has been increased. This should reduce their primacy in battle. That's it for now folks, but we'll be back soon with another video to delve into some of the new game features coming in By Blood Alone. We're looking forward to telling you more about our new expansion, but until then, make sure to follow us on social media to get plenty of updates about Hearts of Iron.